Chief scientist for the British government has criticised the lack of comprehension and needs of the people on the ground. Many policies are outdated and everything is prescribed from top down. This mismanagement has serious implications for the human environments of Cornwall. Its economy today is still greatly strengthened by the fishing. It's with fishing is that it's, in my family, it's our lives, it's our livelihood. And the quotas are not, they're not uh, tailored to suit the fishing. Our policies need to change dramatically if we are going to have a future here in New and in Cornwall. You cannot have a blanket policy for decisions that are made on the tide. Similarly, top-down policies have created the illusion of low prices, which has led to negative consequences for the physical environment. I, I doubt that the, that the environmental impact of producing that food is really represented, truly represented in the, the amount that we actually pay. Unless we look at land and how we use it through the lens of ecosystem services, we are stuffed. Dairy farmers are acutely affected by the illusion of low prices. Three dairy farmers a day are being forced out of business. Last year we were just getting quite worried at the, the milk price because it has been plummeting for the last two, three years. We're not going to be able to carry on forever at that, at that rate. We're on 21p a litre at the moment and it costs 28p to produce it. So it's been in the news a lot, hasn't it? And nothing has changed for us. So capitalism's got quite a lot to answer for with respect to the food system because it's effectively separated out producers and consumers. Uh, it insists on maximum productivity, whether that means um, injecting hormones and antibiotics into cattle or improvers into soils or just dredging the ocean bottom. Um, that has effects on well-being. When we're separated from, our, from natural environments, our well-being suffers. Loss of both dairy and cattle farmers in Cornwall reflect a loss of identity and a homogenisation of a whole lot more than just milk. We are rapidly moving towards islands of diversity surrounded by seas of monoculture. So how in the future can we produce food in a physically and socially sustainable way? I think here at the start of the 21st century we have great, much greater opportunity to localise our activities, um, to work collaboratively and collectively and to gather people into that food production and food growing process. The farmer and fisher provide food for people but also have the opportunity to help people reconnect with their food. Uh, there's a great deal to be said for the well-being benefits of, of both growing and preparing, but also sharing food. So there's lots of ways in which um, we, we should seek to reconnect uh, in various ways to, the, to our food systems. What we did here in 2009, get one of our fields and turn it into uh, allotments. So now there's 20 odd families from the village near us uh, that, that have allotments. If local growers and local um, horticulturalists, vegetable growers, fisher people, whoever it is, can gather in their communities and engage their communities, actually bring them into working alongside as well as just selling to them, I think we're really building in some, some, some elements of economic sustainability, social sustainability, you get a much greater sense of, of um, people are more engaged with environmental sustainability as well because they're seeing the activity going on in front of them and they're part of it. There is an urgent need for people to become more educated on the processes and people involved in food production. And the, the, the thing that is really important to me is the, the traceability of it, the authenticity of it. I know that, that when I go and pick something, that I know how that's been grown. I probably planted it myself. Education about food systems and the benefits of investing in local food may help people realise the power of their purse. By being a conscientious consumer, they are a part of repairing the food system through a bottom-up approach. But I think for the people um, who educate themselves, it's up to them to then make that responsible choice. To amend the harmful consequences of subsidies, policymakers and the local food movement can find a middle ground. Science-led policies such as support for ecosystem service payments has proved beneficial for humans and the environment. Environmental issues urgently need a revolutionary approach not submission to the slow evolutionary system that has largely failed us so far. So we run a stock enhancement program which releases baby lobsters into the waters around Cornwall and personally it's fantastic to be part of a conservation program which is supported by fishermen. The grassroots movement of localising food is not only necessary but imperative for social and environmental sustainability to be achieved. Grassroots movement needs to be embraced and encouraged by local producers and communities to ensure that there is pressure for effective top-down change to take place.